Miércoles. Hoy es miércoles. Wednesday, the third day of March. And we are finishing up our study. Sorry, it doesn't go Monday through Friday. It goes Thursday through Wednesday. Five studies on each church letter. So read the next one. The next church uh, we uh, uh, study begins in chapter 2 with verse 12 to the church in Pergamum. Pergamum. But we're finishing up verse 11 to the church in Smyrna, the one who is being persecuted and hassled and threatened. Jesus said, I'm not, I'm not promising deliverance now, but just be faithful to the end, even if it costs you your life. Ooh, what a strong kind of Christianity that is. Again, if you read early church history and current church history, people have paid with their lives. You know, one one man, wasn't it, was it Wycliffe or Huss? Pre-Reformation, they started preaching the, the true message of salvation by, by salvation through faith, by God's grace. And the Roman Catholic system that, that was then in control of things persecuted them, and got so mad, I think it was Huss or Wycliffe, one of the two. Wycliffe was from England, and Huss was from, like, what we would call Eastern Europe. They dug up his bones and burned them. I mean, how much could you hate a guy? He's not just dead. You got to dig him up and, like, burn him on top of that. How dare you? Somewhere burned alive? and clung to their faith. Some died in the flames singing until they were forced to scream from the pain. Oh, Pastor Simba, that's not my idea of a, a walk in the park. I, look, I can only we can only read the Bible and study history and know what has happened and what could happen. So, whoever has ears, here we go, the same ending as the church to Ephesus. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be hurt at all by the second death. So whoever has ears, let them hear. The Spirit is speaking to the church. This is interesting because Jesus is writing the letter, but he says, if you have an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And the Spirit doesn't stop speaking messages to churches and ministers, words of correction, words of affirmation. You know, God's not dead. He's alive. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The one who perseveres and is victorious, who overcomes, this is the theme in the, in, in the whole book of Revelation. Hard times are coming. There's going to be difficulty and persecution. You got to win the victor's crown. You got to run till the tape. You got to run. You got to finish. You got to win. Win the crown. The crown of eternal light. So remember what we covered yesterday. The crown is not, it's, it's a spiritual blessing, spiritual crown, eternal life, eternal joy, eternal perfection. Call it, there's no words to describe it. Paul, the apostle, was lifted up to the third heaven. He said it was overwhelming. He couldn't talk about it. It was too much. And he also said, having experienced that, it's not worth to compare one thing we go through here on earth with what's waiting for us. Nothing we go through here, you can't even compare it, don't. It's like you got a little paper cut. That's the worst that could happen to you compared to eternity of just every good thing that Christ has prepared for us. The person who's victorious will not be hurt by the second death. Well, wait a minute, second death? What's that about? So let's review life and death. Biological life begins, let's say, when you're conceived. And you're alive. You're alive in your mother. 
That's why abortion is murder. Um, you have biological life, and then that ends, and that's called death. Life and death. Birth, death. That's for our physical life. Now, spiritual life begins when you are joined to Christ, in union with Christ, by being born again, by believing in the gospel, having your sins forgiven and becoming part of the family of God, and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, and you now have the gift of eternal life, which means you'll never be separated from God forever. Biological life is you're connected to the earth, to oxygen, to food, etc., and it ends when you die. You are now separated from that life. Death means separation. So when you're born again, you are now experiencing eternal life. What's the second death? To those who reject Christ, who don't trust him, won't follow him. You have two deaths. Just like believers have two births, physical birth, spiritual birth. That's probably what Jesus meant, unless you be born of the water, physical, or water, made up of water, mostly, and the Spirit, capital S, spiritual birth. You can't see the kingdom of heaven. There are two deaths. There's when your soul is separated from your body. When your soul is separated from your body, that's the first death, biological death. The second death is when your soul is separated from God forever. Do you get it, folks? Awesome thought. Forever. You wake up and you're separated from God in a place. It doesn't sound good as I read Jesus' words. And it has no end. Let's tell someone about Jesus today. Call someone. Oh, they won't accept that. You never know. Let's love on them. Tell them that Jesus saves. There's a gift of eternal life if they'll just turn to him and believe. If they don't believe and they mock you, go to the next one. Come on, let's keep going. Knocking on doors. Calling people. Sharing with people. And let's also encourage ourselves today when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We're going to go home soon. We're going home. This is not my home, not my home. Our home is in heaven. We're going to be there with Jesus. God bless you.